as you can see, I have finished digging the hill and I have some wood set out here that I'm going to be building a frame for the concrete foundation or the footer of the wall. So my dad's coming in a couple of hours. I thought I would go ahead and get started here. So let me show you some of the things I've prepared here and then we'll get uh, started to um, assemble this wooden frame. First of all is the water source for the concrete. I've got the ram pump in the creek and it's pulling uh, this water up here to this bucket that I can use. And then when that uh, isn't filling fast enough, I've got regular tap water over here. So I've also got the concrete stacked up here. 23 bags, I believe. Hopefully that will be enough. I've got the uh, mesh over here, which you can hardly see. There you go. That's the silt mesh that will allow water through but not uh, silt and then we'll be using these pieces of rebar down here to uh, hold up the wood. The frame assembly is quite simple. I want uh, this 16 inch board here to be attached at the end of this one uh, because I'm going to be making a 16 inch frame. I now have the frame assembled with 16 inches between the wall and the wood, give or take. Over here in this side over here there's a little bit extra space, but that'll be alright. Now I'm going to take this rebar that I've set out and I'm going to be putting it in the ground next to the wood to keep that wood from sliding around. Now I'm moving on to mixing the concrete. I had to go with 80 pound bags, of course. They're heavy. All right. Yes. Move over here to the water. I've had the ram pump water cut off for a little while. Check out the pressure that's behind this thing. Impressive, huh? I'm not sure if that's uh, about 20 psi or what it is, but it's up there pretty good. If you're not familiar with what a ram pump is, Go to my channel and type in R-A-M space P-U-M-P to find out more. It's a water pump that I use. I build and sell them. Uh, it goes in the creek and you don't have to have electricity or fuel. It just uses uh, gravity to pump water. It's quite amazing. So I'm just going to mix this up here and then dump it into the frame that's been built. This batch seems like it's thoroughly mixed up. Get it plot down here. Been using my garden hoe to get everything out of here. Then I'm also using this to kind of Plop this down where it needs to go. And now we're ready for the next batch. I apologize for this terrible lighting. The house is hitting right here on the edge of where I need to work. So using a tape measure and torpedo level, I'm going to sink the middle uh, rebar here for the block so that uh, I can build up on this later. Now I should have this bent into the foundation, but I'm not entirely sure how to do that. So for now though, I'm just going to use the level in here. And 
and go on two different sides to make sure it's straight up and down. And that'll give some support for the wall into the foundation. So now that that one is done, I'm going to come over 16 inches and put another one in. By going over 16 inches, I am effectively going every other hole on the blocks. So let's see what we get here. Right there ought to do it. Okay. Let me tamp that a little bit because it's starting to harden or dry out at least. And then once again, I'm going to use my level to get this where it needs to be. A few years ago, I had a crazy idea that I would use concrete blocks to make a dam across the creek. Uh, <laughs> I actually have a book about that on my website. Uh, it's kind of a comical read, so if you're looking for a good laugh, I'd recommend that. But, long story short, I've got all these blocks that I paid 50 cents a piece for, and I think I had 300 of them at first, so saved a good deal of money. So I think blocks now are like a dollar fifty at Lowe's, something like that. But anyway, um, they've got some concrete on them that has to be cleaned off with a chisel. So I'm going to load these up in the car and uh, take them up to where our wall is being built. I hope I don't find any ants or uh, bad spiders in here. Ah, or wasp nests. It's been a couple days, time to remove the wooden form of our concrete slab here. So I'm going to loosen up these pieces of rebar, hopefully, and get this wood out of here. There's one. Hmm. That one got a little bit of concrete around it. Maybe a little difficult to pull that one out. Maybe adjust it with this rock a little bit. There we go. Now, see if I can break this wood free. There we go. Time to start making some serious progress on this wall. I've got 29 blocks brought up and I've chipped off the excess concrete that was around them. And I uh, had to dig out this corner just a hair um, right there so that I can get this uh, 90 in here and that will allow the pipe to go around that corner. Now I've got my mix uh, prepared. Hopefully it's a little bit on the loose side, but I'm out of sand, so it's gonna have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start plopping this down and getting some work done. A little disclaimer here, I am not a skilled mason, so don't take my uh, steps here to be the truth for everything you're supposed to do as far as uh, mixing and laying out because I definitely have only done this one other time. So I'm hoping to get a full row done today. And if I've got extra concrete mixed up here, I will uh, work on the next one. 
So right now I'm just kind of plopping down a heavy layer of this. And let me see. I think first I'm going to put this down here in this corner so I know where that's supposed to go. And then I'm going to take my first block here and see where this is going to go. Looks like right about there. Okay. Very nice. Let me get my level. That's important. Now the entire pad here slopes down and uh, towards that way to allow for some drainage. That looks pretty good there. But I want to keep this as consistent as I can. Okay. That one looks good. I want to make sure that this next block has room here. Uh, yes, it sure does. So should be good on that one. I think I'll go ahead and do that part next here. My mix is a little bit wet here, but hey, it's been at least a year and a half to two years since I've mixed any of this up. So. I thought I was doing pretty good. <sighs> hey, not bad. There's quite a slope on that side, so I guess I just have to uh, do the best I can. I've found that my car is able to haul 15 blocks at a time. Now, because all of these used to be part of a building, they need to be cleaned. And when I say cleaned, I mean uh, the edges of them have this concrete on them. And so I just hit them with a chisel here to pop that loose. Comes off pretty easy. Most of these blocks have at least one side on them that needs to be cleaned. And so for this one, it's just this side right here. I think this used to be part of a building years ago. That one's done. I have two full rows of blocks done, and I figure before I get too much higher, I better install this drain pipe so I can still reach it. So I'm gonna just pull this down into the trench here. Let's see what we need. Now, a suggestion was made. I forget, uh, who made it, but I appreciate it. It was a good one. Said put in one of these T's down here and bring a pipe up to above the grade. So if this ever does get something in it, I can then flush it with the garden hose um, from the upper end here. So I'm gonna cut this pipe and uh, install this T. Looks like if I cut here, I'll have enough space, so go around and get this opened up. There we go. Nice. It's a little bit cramped down here, but I'm going to see if I can get this pushed into that uh, 90 degree elbow that was installed down here. Now the question is, can I get this back down in here? I guess another question is, should I put this other side in first before doing that? Through the magical powers of video editing, I got that uh, 90 degree put in there. 
Now let's see about this T. Maybe it's a little easier. Mm, yep, there we go. Okay, other side. Mm, nice. All right, I'm gonna get a piece of uh, non-slit pipe to go up here. Let's see what height I need here. So if that was stuck in there, I'm gonna cut up here to make sure that it's above the grade. So you can see that down here, I've stuck the pipe in, and then up here, I'm just going to simply attach this cap, and that will prevent leaves, rodents, water from getting in here. Okay, and so whenever I need to flush that someday, pull that off of there, and then I have access to the pipe. I've been helping a friend of mine to move, and she had all of this silk fabric here and gave it to me. Seemed like the ideal thing to use for this wall. So I'm gonna get this uh, put in, I believe, because it looks kinda like it's gonna rain. So I'd like to have this in covering that pipe before water starts coming off of this hill. So let's get this installed real quick. I might end up having to cut this because it's so tall, but we'll just see what we can do with what we've got. And it may end up being that I have to cut it so that I can actually uh, span this entire distance because I'm not sure how much of this I even have. It seems to me that since this is going to be stopping silt from getting to the pipe, that the pipe should actually be on top of this. And we've got plenty of it, so I mean, I don't see why not. Kind of make a, a sock around there. And then uh, this will still go up the hill and then the rock will uh, go on top of it in here like that so that's what i'm going to do and hopefully it's the right thing here's what the silt fabric looks like once it's been installed on all the hill back here so and it's round up around the pipe one time to uh, hopefully prevent any of that red clay dirt from getting in the pipe during my retaining wall research, I found that one of the main reasons that a wall will fail is because of moisture getting behind it or a hydrostatic pressure. So they recommend that there be a waterproof barrier on the back side of the wall. And so I'm going to use two of them. Uh, Blue Max is a liquid rubber and also I'm going to use uh, a um, plastic sheet that's going to go back here. So hopefully this is uh, still good. I used this on the tiny house foundation a couple years back. So let's open it up and see uh, if we can get this wall painted back here. Now I'm just going to do the three blocks that will be contacting the most dirt. After that, uh, just let that plastic layer um, just take up the rest of the space. I had this open about a month ago and it was still good. So we'll see what it looks like today. If it is bad, I may have to get some of that black tar that goes on foundations. Huh? No, I believe it's still good. I've just got a regular paintbrush I'm going to use to get this put on. So this stuff applies just like a regular paint, except it's really thick. So I'm just going to coat the whole uh, first three blocks here and it'll take a little while to dry. Now the um, can recommends that you put two to three coats but uh, with that other waterproofing back here I'm just going to put one and consider it good. So it won't be completely watertight with just the Blue Max but uh, you know I don't have that much of it and don't have that much time. Because this wall is the first step in the building of the workshop that has to be here by uh, February. Because when that baby gets here, my building time will not be very great. 
I managed to get the blue max on all the back of the wall here and it's looking good. So the next step is to go get more blocks and continue building this up. I'm down to the last two blocks here of the wall. Really excited to have this done. I guess it's taken me about two weeks to get uh, the whole wall done. Which I guess is not too terrible. But uh, I'm glad it's almost done. If you want to find out how to actually lay block, I'd recommend a different video because I'm definitely new to this. But it seems to be working out, so I keep going with it. I don't have much of this mortar mix left, but what I do have, I'm going to drop down in this last hole because eventually I'm going to be filling all these with concrete, uh, at least the ones that have the rebar in them. Now the rebar only goes up in the bottom two, so I'm probably just going to fill up concrete the bottom three. And then the top uh, level does not have as much pressure behind it. So I think I'm going to leave it without filling. After two weeks of work and uh, somehow managing to uh, not get any rain during this period, the wall is almost done. I've got this titanium underlayment that I used for the tiny house. I've got a lot of it left, so I'm going to use that as the plastic barrier that goes back here to keep water out. Uh, so let's install that real quick. And uh, there's an ominous looking cloud coming, so I also want to backfill with some rocks uh, with the time I've got before it rains. Using this titanium underlayment might be a little bit of overkill, Ooh, but uh, I've got a lot of it and I might as well use it up. At least that's my thought. So. That's what we're going to do here. Uh, I think I might roll out about 30 foot of this and then make it easier on us to get it back here. I should still have plenty of this left over to go on the roof of the workshop. It was a long roll. I'm not aware of any special technique to this besides just get it along the wall, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm trying to tuck in under the pipe just a little bit, hoping that'll add a little extra uh, waterproofing there. Now everything I have heard and read says that you've got to have something down between the, the silt filter and the underlayment here for waterproofing to help drain, like a drainage substance. And in my case, that's going to be rocks. And when I chipped off all these pieces of concrete, I think that would also be suited here to help drain uh, in here. So. I'm going to pick up all these, probably rake them up, and then just set them in here. And then I'm going to go around the property and find rocks of all various sizes and plop them in here. And I hear it's supposed to be a minimum of one foot of drainage in here. That way, um, when water falls in here, it hits the rock and can go out. After two and a half weeks of work, the retaining wall is finally done. Let's take a look at it real quick. I'm going to come back later and attach this pipe to this piece right over here. But for now, 
I believe we're gonna leave it where it is. I have moved riffraff rock all along the back side here, about six inches to a foot up. Still could use a little more, and I may do that later on, but for now it's good. Also, I'm gonna come back with some paint because uh, this multicolored wall is not the prettiest. Now I've come through and uh, filled in the squares that have the rebar um, up to the third block where that rebar was. And also the silt filter is in and complete. And uh, two different waterproofing on the wall have this titanium underlayment and then the blue max that's painted on. So that completes the wall. For the time being, I've dug a little trench here to allow the water to go into this uh, pipe that does not have holes in it. And it's just attached with a coupling there. And at some point, I'm going to be burying this next to the other pipe over here. And it will go down the hill over the septic tank. Now that the wall has been complete, it's time to start on the workshop. I'm very excited about this project, and I hope you are too. I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.